Hello everyone. Neural control interfaces or brain machine interfaces as they're more popularly known are creating new ways to treat neurological diseases and are giving the users the ability to communicate directly with the machine using brain commands. One of its most recent applications has been using an NCI along with an augmented reality environment to treat phantom limb pain. For building these interfaces two of the most popular candidates being studied are electroencephalography and functional near infrared spectroscopy. Electroencephalography, which is mostly a non-invasive process as the electrodes are attached just to the scalp, allows us to read the electrical activity of the neurons. These electrical signals are then analyzed broadly using a three-step process. Feature extraction, which allows us to convert the raw signal data into informative features that are suitable for modeling, followed by feature selection, which allows us to retain all the relevant features. And finally, classification, which allows us to categorize the signals into different frequency bands known as delta, theta, alpha, beta, and gamma. These bands can tell us a lot about the user's cognitive state. For example, beta wave band is associated with active process of thinking. And gamma is usually seen when the brain recognizes an object from short term memory or during a limb movement. These signals can then be conveyed to a machine, such as a robotic prosthetic or a computer to perform specific tasks, such as moving an avatar in an augmented reality. The limitations of this technique include artifacts from other bioelectrical activities, such as neuromuscular signals, which make classification very difficult. Also, low spatial resolution of the signals due to the skull acting as a barrier is also a problem. However, advances have allowed better resolution. Another game-changing technique is functional near-infrared spectroscopy, which is based on the concept that active sites in the brain see an increase in the oxygenated blood level. This change can then be measured using the phenomenon that near-infrared radiation is absorbed more by oxygenated blood as compared to deoxygenated blood. During the spectroscopy, near-infrared waves are passed through the skull using a wave emitter and are detected using an optode. The difference in the intensity between the emitted radiation and the detected is calculated to proportionally signify the changes in the oxygenated blood level. This technique allows us to create a visual map of the changes occurring in the brain using the oxygenation data by converting it into a voxel of three-dimensional spatial representation of the brain. This visual map can then be interpreted using machine learning models, given the fact that certain regions in the brain correlate to certain actions, such as posterior region of the frontal cortex, is associated with the movements of both face and the limbs. Although quite useful, this technique is unable to access deeper regions in the brain. Another disadvantage is the low spatial resolution of the images it generates of the brain activity. One way in which researchers are tackling the disadvantages posed by EEG and spectroscopy is by using them both together to generate high resolution spatiotemporal data about the brain activity. Researchers have been using a combination of EEG electrodes and spectroscopy optodes to capture brain activity and Using convolution neural networks, they classified electrical signals in the images generated, thereby building a combined map of the cognitive activity. This approach reinforces the interpretability of the brain activity due to the advantages from combining high-resolution EEG data and active site positioning from spectroscopy data. A variety of applications for neural control interfaces are popping up related to augmented reality, such as navigating a robotic avatar However, there are many limitations posed by the complexity of design of both neural control interfaces and augmented reality. For example, EEG performance can be negatively affected due to the electrical interference from the AR hardware. Moreover, combining these two technologies would mean navigating the challenges of precisely communicating the brain command to the augmented reality interface. Despite all these challenges, looking at the pace and quality of innovation, the future is exciting for neural control interfaces.